All right, good day everyone. So in this lesson, we're going to learn to calculate species diversity. Um, because let's say we have an instance where we have two different ecosystems and they are both damaged and we need to know which in which case we should put our resources into because we have limited resources as well um, to help that ecosystem recover what we should do is look at the various components of that ecosystem and one of those ecosystems that is one of those um, ecosystems is 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 worse off than the next. So one of the elements that we can look at is species diversity. All right. Now, in the last class, we looked at biodiversity. Um, and we looked at the definition for biodiversity. Um, so here we see that biodiversity can be used to refer to the number of species, their genetic diversity, or the habitat type. So they're various elements of biodiversity itself but here we're going to look at focusing on species all right now species can in an area you can have quite a number of different species but each species themselves would have an a population all right now we have important terms representing these things so when looking at biological diversity or species diversity right the species aspect of biological diversity we look at species richness and evenness now what exactly are those two terms species richness and species evenness there are two main components which drive species biodiversity. Species richness describes a number of different species present in an area. And simply put, the more species in an area, the greater the richness. So that is species richness. And then we have species evenness. It describes the relative abundance of a different species in an area. For example, similar abundance equals more evenness. So this here looks at basically the, the distribution of numbers in each species. All right. So we have two, two cases here, community one and community two, where we have four species, four similar species in each community so what we can say is that both community has the same species richness remember species riches is the number of species found in an area but they have different evenness so if you look at the, the percentages right you can see that in community one all of these species are evenly distributed Whereas community two, you have this species that I'm pointing here dominating the area. So this is best adapted for this ecosystem. Okay. And that is species richness and species evenness. One element by itself cannot give us the biodiversity, species biodiversity of an area. The two elements must be combined in order to give us the species diversity of an area, of an ecosystem. All right. And how we actually get that is we use something called a species diversity index. A species diversity index, which gives us a rating of the level of diversity. Now, there are many species diversity index um, that we can use. However, for key purposes, we use the Simpsons Reciprocal Index. 
And this takes into account both the species richness and the number of the number of individuals per species. So it takes into account both richness and evenness. Um, what is important to note is that the higher the index value, the greater the biodiversity of the community, right? So a high species diversity index equals a high biodiversity. So we can actually compare ecosystems based on this species diversity index. And to get this index, we actually have to do a calculation. So what I brought up for you here is the formula. So this diversity index is equal to big N, open brackets, big N minus one, close brackets, over this sig the sign here it's it's the the symbol for summation over the summation of small n open brackets n minus one close brackets now what is all of this well the big n is the total number of individuals collected so that's the total population of all the species combined the small n, however, it is the number of individuals of each species. So it's the population of each species. So this Simpson's reciprocal index can be used to compare communities to identify various qualities. A high index value suggests a stable site with many different niches and low competition, high richness and evenness. So the high richness and high evenness is, is, would mean that we would have a high index value. That suggests a stable system. A low index value suggests a site with, pot with few potential niches where only a few species dominate. And this this may not be as stable because if we have a few species dominating, if um, for some reason those species were to die out, then we would have problems in that ecosystem, right? There would be no species really to fulfill the role of this dominant, this dominant species. And then we have the index value may change in response to an ecological disturbance such as human intervention or a natural disaster. So a species diversity index, it is not constant. It may change due to activities that is occurring around that ecosystem or in that ecosystem. So now that we have the formula, we can look at some sample keep questions. Number one, sampling of plants was done yielding the results in the table below. As a species use a species diversity index to compare the biodiversity of the two different locations. So we have location one, location two, and in each location we found three species each. Species A was six and four in their various locations. Species B was 15 and 8 in their various locations and species C was 4 and 3 in their various locations. Now the question says to compare the biodiversity of the two different locations. So location 1, it's in a separate system from location 2. Or if it's in the same system, we have to do the calculations separately. Right, because that is what the question is telling us, to compare the biodiversity of the two locations. So we have to calculate the species diversity of location 1 and then calculate the species diversity of location 2 and compare them. Now if we recall, the diversity index is big N, 
which means that we must get the total number of individuals collected at that location, the total number. And then small n, where we deal with now the number of individuals of each species. So we deal with each number separately. So let's look at big N first. So big N in location 1 would be 6 plus 15 plus 4, which would give us a total of 25. So location 1 has a total number of individuals. Big N would be equal to 25. And then for location 2, we have 4 plus 8 plus 3 gives us 15. So big N for location 2 is 15, right? Now, so let's do some calculations with location 1. So if we plug this, these numbers, location 1, we are looking at only this row here. We plug these numbers into our formula, well, big N would be 25. And then in brackets, we would have N minus 1, which would be 25 minus 1. And so let's see. We have here location 1, our numerator, 25, open brackets, 25 minus 1, close brackets. Now, if we look at what we are having at the in our denominator here now, we are looking at each individual species by themselves and we are working them out and then adding them because we have this summation sign, then adding them all together. So we have our first species 6. So it will be 6 by, so n would be 6 and n minus 1 would be 6 minus 1. That is our first species found at location 1. Our next species found at location 1, it's, it's species B. That is 15. So it would be 15 by 15 minus 1 plus 4 by 4 minus 1. So we, we are getting the drift now. When we work out these, we get 25 by 24 is 600. We get 6 by 5, 15 by 14, 4 by 3. So we place them here and we add them all together. We get 600 over 252. So our diversity index for location 1, it's 2.38. Now, if we do the same for location 2, we get 15 by 15 minus 1. Plus, we use here now 4 by 4 minus 1, 8 by 8 minus 1, 3, by 3 minus 1. What we get is this here, and we get 210 over 12 plus 56 plus 6, which gives us a value of 2.84. So what exactly is this telling us? This is telling us that although these numbers are lower, because it is distributed, because the evenness, um, it's, it's, it's closer together, location 2 tends to be or tends to have a higher diversity than location 1. Although it is very close, the higher the diversity index, the higher the, di the diversity will be. And the more stable the ecosystem will be. So location 2 has, it is considered to be more stable because the diversity index is higher. Alright, so let's move on to sample question number 2. The results of testing fish population in three different streams are shown in this table here. So in this table, it's an escape question. We already have the number of individuals calculated. So what I want you to do is I want you to take some time and use this information, use the formula provided and work out these answers. And what you should get is you should get these diversity indices 
where stream C would have a higher diversity than the rest.